This is the most used item I've ever made on a CNC machine. I made it three years ago out of the worst piece of scrap plywood in my shop. Since then, all kinds of games have been played. People have been dunked on, lampshades and computer monitors have been killed. I think we can get an even better win out of an already successful project. Let's go next level, let's add features. We're gonna use the latest version of Carbide Create to do so, and we're gonna build a better hoop. Hold up, you might say, Kevin, I don't need a hoop. Yes, but you do need CNC skills. Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills. Here's a whole host of new skills you're gonna get. We're gonna use the array tool with overlapping geometry. We'll talk about V carving operation choices and look, creating interfacing parts, the proper order of operations. We'll use upcut and downcut end mills on one tool path, and I'll show you why that's ideal for chamfers. And I have to believe this kind of project is gonna spark something in you. You're going to make something very cool because you were here. So let's dive in. In the 80s and 90s, this was the vision of what you thought a Nerf hoop could be. This was an advanced one. Look at how high the ceilings are. They're dunking. It's crazy. This is what you actually had. It was close to the ceiling on top of a door. And yeah, you were probably going to war with your brother in your PJs. Nowadays, things have gotten a little more technical. There's plenty of stuff out there from Nerf, from other companies, and maybe even a market for mini hoops made out of wood. I don't know. That's a lot of money. Five seventy-eight for a hoop. There could be a market. But back up a second, a couple of things are definitely happening. This bunny moose thing is getting thrown through the hoop immediately. And for sure that kid is dunking off this weird side table and the couch. And this other kid, yeah, he's going to dunk off that table. He's going to smash that computer monitor and get in trouble with dad. But is this his house or is this his house? There's so much bad Photoshop out there. Welcome to your artificial reality future. For our project, let's begin with the basics of a hoop. You're never bound by these constraints, but they can be a good guide. An NBA rim, 18 inches in diameter, the ball nine and a half or so. This is approximately two to one. So you want to base your hoop project around the size of the ball you've selected. I was working with a six inch plush. If I were to do it again, I would start with this ball and see how it goes. You can't dribble a plush, but then again, you couldn't dribble that little Nerf ball anyhow. This is kind of a classic feel. I put this build together so fast, I don't actually have the design file. So it's time to design version number two from scratch right now. I had several goals right from the top. I wanted to attach a real net. I wanted a larger backboard, put a logo on the backboard, move the mounting holes 16 inches apart so they could be mounted into studs and improve the support integration underneath the rim while making the rim itself stronger. Without the original file, we're gonna have to take measurements off the old one. Not that big a deal. It's just gonna have to be recreated in the software. That will be our starting point. I'm gonna write down all the measurements on the board. Then I'm gonna take it to my computer and recreate it. I originally designed this where the rim could be easily changed out and that proved critical because I broke the first rim on the first shot. So I'm gonna keep that design in version number two. The modular flexibility would be great if you had to ship this product. Welcome into Carbide Create, where I've already reproduced version one of the rim from all the measurements that we just took. Let's set about improving it. First of all, I want to attach a net. And for that, we're going to use the pre-promised array tool. And I want to use it with two different elements. So these are the elements here. And I want to take both this group with little keyholes and this particular rectangle. And I want to center those over my inner rim profile or vector. So I'm gonna align it that way. And now I wanna take these guys and I'm gonna create an array. So I can take them individually if I'd like and do a circular array. I need to select the center in the window and this is where this little guide circle comes in handy. I'm gonna to go to the center of that guide circle and hit that as my center. And you notice it puts those keyholes all the way around, 12 of them, and that number will be determined by the number of loops on your net all the way around this circle. We'd like to duplicate the toolpath links, we'd like to group the output, and we want to rotate the individual items. If you don't rotate them, it doesn't work. If you rotate them, they have the same alignment all the way around. Perfect, hit okay. Next, we wanna grab this guy and we'll do the same thing. And the presets, yeah, they're the same. So all the way around, we have the same thing, hit okay. Now we have spots for our net. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna carve to different depths. We'll cover that in tool pathing in just one second. Now in this file for demonstration purposes, I have both A and also B in its completed form. I told you that I wanted to have a Bulls logo on the backboard. So I've not only made the backboard bigger and I've rounded off the top of it and rounded off the corners with the corner tool, which is a handy new feature. I've also gone ahead and imported the Bulls logo. We're gonna show you how to cut that in just one second. When it comes to the corner tool, you'll notice slight differences between the finished product here with rounded edges 
and the original one here. And that is done with the corner tool. Select the vector, hit the corner tool, in this case, a radius of 20. Let's maybe even go 30 and we'll see what happens. We round off, we round off, we round off, we round off. And we've softened the edges of everything there. We don't want to soften these because they're just going in the back of our cutout. Hit OK. And now we've utilized the corner tool. Creating interfacing parts. A little bit of a tricky thing here. How thick is your stock? In this case, I've set it in my setup. It is 17.8 millimeters or three quarters of an inch nearly. I've measured exactly with my calipers. So we hit OK. We know 17.8 is our exact measurement for the thickness of our stock. So when we cut this room out, that's exactly how thick it will be. If we go down and look at this area, this is what we need to set up for our pass through. And if we go out to our finished version, it has a chamfer line on the inside, but on the outside, it is 18.5. So a little under one millimeter in difference, 18.5 and then 141 wide. And that 141 millimeters is based off the width of our rim right here. If I take a measurement, I measure from this node to this node, 140. So I've given it about one millimeter of difference between the height, which is the thickness of your material and the width of my rim so that the rim can slide into that open space. Very good. Next, let's look at V-carve operations. This is my tool pathing. Don't be intimidated by the amount of tool paths here. None of it is incredibly complicated. There's just a lot of different individual paths. You should also know that while reviewing this file, I discovered an error I made and something I'm not happy with with my version. I'm gonna go back and try and correct the one that I have. Let me show you where that error is in the Bulls V-Carve portion of the simulation. Inspecting the V-Carve, that's sort of the Bulls logo, but you notice you're not really getting the right shape in here. You're getting a little bit of carve in, you're getting some bubbles. Getting this type of result in your simulation is generally a function of the area being carved being too wide for your V-Carve bit alone. Without going all the way through the bottom of the stock, I can't capture this entire wide area. This is where you need to switch to advanced V-Carve. Let's disable that toolpath and enable the advanced V-Carve. And we'll take a look at the simulation. Oh, look at that. That looks so much better. So much better. That's the Bulls logo. I should have done that. I'm always changing and tweaking things. This is something I will change. When I put this up on Cut Rocket, it will be perfect. Now I said earlier, we were gonna machine those arrays to different depths, but what I didn't mention was that I machined both arrays to the same depth first, and that didn't work. If you take a look here, that did not function for retaining the net. What I did figure out with this version was that if I cut those keyholes all the way through my rim, and I left a little hook here, then that would be perfect for a basketball net. It wouldn't kind of bow into the hoop, it would go straight down and hang as it normally should, and I could have some pretty robust hooks. Something I hadn't really conceptually wrapped my brain around during the design portion. That's why you have to make different versions of things in order to figure some stuff out. If you get lucky and the second version works, fantastic. More often than not, it's three. I also made some changes to the supports from the originals to an idea to the finals. I'm gonna cover that right now. For those supports, instead of just a plain rectangle in this area, I went ahead and matched the exact shape of my rim. And I did that utilizing the Boolean function to create this exact shape. And now I'm gonna cut it as a separate contour. So you notice in my simulation, I have my supports cut out here. I have my net cutouts all the way around the rim. I also have applied a chamfer all the way around my parts. And that chamfer occurs in between using a 251 down cut and a 201 up cut end mill. I did this with a 301 and it runs along all the top edges of my parts. For the underside, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the edges off. You don't want any sharp points when you're dunking. How about the order of your tool paths? Let's make sure we optimize what we're doing. We're trying to change tools as little as possible. As you scroll down over each tool path, it will show you the tool in use. Looking at my top six or seven here, they're all with the 1 8th, 102 standard end mill. This includes my backboard cutout. And I'm using that 1 8 inch end mill to reduce the amount of filing I have to do. I'll want a nice sharp edge in that cutout, with a 1 8 it leaves much less of a radius. The filing should be slight and quick. And now that I have this advanced V-carve in here, I'm actually gonna move this up and I'm gonna run my advanced V-carve up here because I'm gonna use a 1 8 inch end mill for the start of this advanced V-carve. By moving up that advanced V-carve, I've cut down my tool changes by one because the 1 8 cutter is already in the machine. Then I'll go to a 251 down cut 
and I'm going to cut down to six millimeters around all of my contours. So six millimeters around the backboard, six millimeters around the rim, six millimeters around the support. And then I'm gonna run my chamfers. And this allows me to chamfer when I have maximum strength with the parts. It's not held on by tabs after being completely cut out. It also prevents the V-bit from having to cut a fresh line. The bit chamfers the edge we want while running in the groove created by the 251 down cut. With the chamfers complete, I'm gonna come back with the 201 up cut to cut everything out completely. Each one of those full cutouts will begin at 6 millimeters from our previous cut with a 251 and go to T plus 0.1 millimeters to be sure and cut through all of our stock. By going from a 251 down cut into a chamfer back to the 201 up cut, I've created two sharp sides. I will have less sanding, almost nothing to do on either side when it comes out of the machine. I'll just have to break the edge and there should be almost no tear out. I also mentioned I wanted this rim to be stronger. I'm going to use Baltic Birch. That'll make it a lot stronger. Let's head off to a cutting montage and get this thing done. Whoever thought your shape Oko could get you dunked on. No! Oh,